Cat self help or self help self prep series. Hi everyone, Kayang here, and I'm back again with a second video on the MCAT self prep series. In this video, I'll be going over my content review strategy, so if you are interested, please keep on watching. And if you haven't seen my previous video, I recommend that you watch it first by clicking the card above. As usual, don't forget to subscribe and turn on the notification button so you don't miss anything. And let's get started. As I said in my previous video, I spent two months on content review and I spent the first month and a half on the sciences with the exam cracker books. I did one or two chapters a day, so one if the chapter was a bit longer and two if they were shorter. I didn't review them in order, but instead I jumped around subjects and chapters to prevent myself from getting bored. And each time I made sure that I understood everything and if I didn't understand something, I would watch Khan Academy videos. It's because there is so much information and if I have to keep coming back, that would just take so much time. And in the last half month, I watched all of the Khan Academy Psych and Soch videos and made notes using the 86 page Khan Academy Psych and Soch notes from Reddit. The reason I didn't intersperse Psych and Soch content review and left it until the end is because there is a lot of vocabulary you have to memorize and knowing myself, I knew I would forget a lot of them if I had learned them earlier on along with science content review. With the Psych and Soch section, you really want to make sure that you know every single one of the vocabulary. So I think you would be able to retain more if you tried learning and memorizing them closer to the actual MCAT date. Alright, so my overarching goal for content review was to read the material at least three times. First, by reading the prep books and typing up notes. Second, by going over the AAMC outline and filling in any supplementary information by going over the notes you made in step one. The advantage of doing this is that you don't have to read the books all over again and you can review your own notes and the AAMC outline at the same time. I personally believe that you learn and retain better if you study with your own notes and also by using the AAMC outline, you get used to the stuff that's covered on the MCAT. The third time of reviewing occurred when I went over my practice test. When I got a question wrong or when I felt iffy about certain topics, I not only reviewed those particular concepts but everything around it. So for example, if I forgot something about the loop of Henley, I would also go over um, distal and proximal convoluted tubules and the glomerulus and so on. So I'll show you what these notes actually look like. This is my exam cracker biology book and you can see that I highlighted the parts I thought were important as I was reading. After reading each subsection, I typed up my notes by putting together these highlighted sentences in my own words. And there are these mini review quizzes throughout the book, so when I got a question wrong, I read the solutions in the back and I wrote down some explanations so I remember next time. Similar thing with the practice test after each chapter. I made a note on why certain choices were not correct and where I got confused and where I made a mistake. I also wrote notes to self such as review peptide or go back to something. Here I even wrote, I get it now, smiley face. <laughs> For certain questions, I felt that it was worth revisiting so I put a little sticky to remind myself. This was kind of like me saying, I probably won't have the time to review every single question, but I have to revisit these questions at least. This is a physics book and I wanted to write down the solution for a certain question so that if I encountered a similar question later on, I would come back to this and see how I did it. This is important. When you read the question solution, you never want to just skim over it but write it down yourself. Try the question again without looking at the solution because you might feel like you know how to do it when you read the solution, but actively solving it yourself is different. Here's one of the physics practice tests and you can see that I wrote the reasons I got questions wrong in orange. For certain questions I thought were particularly important, I wrote down on a separate document called solution notes which looks like this. I wanted to review these notes a couple of days leading up to the MCAT so I know how to avoid mistakes and remember the strategies. Thank you. 
Here's my Google Doc and you can see that I organized my notes by subject and chapter. As an example, I'll show you one of my biology notes. At the top, you see the chapter title and right below that I wrote the overview of the chapter. And the keys are the key points the exam cracker book emphasized in the beginning. As I said earlier, I type these notes after I read each subsection in my own words. And when you rephrase sentences in your own words, your brain actively reorganizes the information you just acquired, so it definitely helps you retain better. I have these important terms in blue and the parts I wanted to remember in red. It's also a good idea to utilize tables to organize information. Throughout my notes, I also put some example questions to remind myself how this information is presented in a question form later when I review these notes. Also, I was going to be referring back to my notes and not the exam cracker books, so I wanted to keep things succinct but also detailed so as not to lack any important information. And here's a tip for you. This is something that helped me a lot and also saved some time. At the end of your notes, have a section called hacks or things to remember to make a note of any particularly important things or strategies you found along the way. Because the truth is, there is so much information you'll be covering and you'll know a lot, if not most of the stuff by heart. You just need to highlight some of the information that you know you'll have to put in some extra effort into remembering. Moving on to the second step of content review, here are my science notes containing biology, biochem, chemistry, and physics. I just got the AAMC outline printed and had them bound at a print shop. I'm such a stationary nerd, so I love the spring detail and clear cover. So yeah, credits to Khan Academy, exam crackers, and so on. So if I open it, you can see that I highlighted some important terms and sentences in yellow as I was reading. And here's what I did when reviewing for the second time. I wrote some supplementary notes using the notes I made in step 1 like these. So I can just make this my own encyclopedia for the MCAT. And I even drew little diagrams like this to remember easily. If I ran out of room, I just used sticky notes as well as on the other side. I use different colors and the colors mean different things but it's been a year so I forgot what each color meant. But yeah, you can also utilize different colors for what's more important, what you're confused about, what you want to look up later, and strategies for remembering and etc. I also have these little flags sticking out for the stuff I wasn't sure about and I went back to Khan Academy to find some more explanations. I also intentionally printed these notes single-sided so I can have the opposite side of the page blank so I can draw diagrams and write more in-depth notes. I think all of the science sections involve some sort of visual so it was nice having lots of room to reproduce those diagrams and tables because I'm a visual learner. I also wrote some practice questions that were relevant and those I wanted to remember. Again, so I have an idea of how these concepts are presented as questions. It's really important to know the content inside out, but I think it's even more important to learn to be able to apply the knowledge to passage-based questions. This one was quite a hefty diagram. It shows what goes on inside the mitochondria during cellular respiration, and this is what I mean. I really liked having the blank page on the other side so I can write all these notes and draw the diagram with a great amount of detail. I got this printed and bound at Staples, and there are 200 pages or so, and I think this cost around $40 to print, which is not inexpensive, but at the same time, it helped me remember, and if I can just write the MCAT once by doing this, then I think it's worth every penny. On the very back side, I made a list of things to remember or to go over. This list was more for towards the end of the prep period, so I can make sure that I know everything and I feel prepared. 
For Saik and Sosh, as you briefly saw in my last video, I watched Khan Academy videos and drew the diagrams myself in the 86-page Saik and Sosh notes by Lazy OCD from Reddit. And honestly, I think this is why I was able to get a 130 on this section. If I couldn't remember something, say for example the phototransduction pathway, I would quickly flip through the pages, glance at the diagram, and I'd be able to recall the information. I don't have a photographic memory or anything, but I could really visualize these diagrams when I closed my eyes because I registered them into my brain as I drew them with my very own hand and I looked at them so many times as I was studying. And I think since these are visually appealing, I was kind of excited to study this section. I love looking at my notes. So I actually got these notes printed as well just because I like having a physical copy that I can flip through. Oh, this is funny. This says 여행, which means travel in Korean, and I put this in front of my desk so I can look at it whenever I felt stressed or sad, and so I can have the last bit of energy to get through the MCAT and travel when it's done. I also wrote some notes in the margin for the things I newly learned while going through the review questions or the things I did more in-depth research on. I wanted to make sure that I knew all the terms by heart and not confuse them with other terms because there are many that are similar. After doing this and making a Quizlet deck of the terms, I felt pretty confident about this section. I have made these notes into a PDF file to share so you can have a look by clicking the link in the description, but I highly recommend that you draw your own diagrams like I did because that's what's going to help you learn and remember. Alright, so that's all I have for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed watching and I hope this was helpful. And if you have any questions, let me know in the comments down below. As always, stay safe, stay healthy, and good luck. I will see you guys in the next video. Bye!